Important figures around our unemployment, as you know, one of the longer term problems in the country that we have. And the unemployment rate, as you can see on your screen, fell to 32.1% in the third quarter. Our business editor, Kalani Mbandra, joining us now in the studio to look at these numbers. Kalani, uh, good morning to you. This would mean that our economy actually added jobs in the third quarter of this year between the beginning of July and the end of September. Yes, uh, this is very good news and I suspect that we are going uh, to hear that uh, the reason why we are here is because of the suspension of uh, load shedding, that respite in power cuts, which is now in its sixth month. Remember, load shedding was suspended on the 26th of March. Yes, there have been bouts of load reduction which affect certain areas, but load shedding as a whole, we haven't had that since the 26th of March. If you look at Quarter two, there were 158,000 jobs lost and we were still in the three months of no load shedding. The experts like Tony Healy did say at the time that the if impact of uh, the respite on blackouts is going to be seen in the third quarter, which is what we are seeing right now, because these are very good numbers. A gain of 294,000 jobs is something that uh, we should celebrate in a crisis in a country that has such a major, major crisis. We've gone from 33.5% uh, uh, in um, the second quarter of unemployment to 32.1% percent in the third quarter and that is between July and September where we did not have load shedding as well. That is uh, the number that we need to celebrate this time around and it uh, goes to show as well that uh, uh, the Bureau for Economic Research uh, which came out in September with the uh, uh, confidence index having uh, upturned, made a U-turn, it shows that there's something in the markets, in the business community in the private sector that the GNU being there is instilling some level of confidence that this is the country is going the right direction but this is very good numbers that should be overall celebrated. Rasingo Malalek is the statistician general he made the announcement a few moments ago. In the third quarter of 2020 uh, uh, was the 2023 we can see that we gained 399 jobs, almost 400,000 jobs. And then we went down by 22,000. We received again 22,000 jobs and we lost again 22,000 jobs in the last quarter. And now we have gained 294,000. So these gains that have taken us to 16.9 million with those that are unemployed sitting at 8 million tell us that the unemployment rate for the third quarter of 2024 is sitting at 32.1%. What it means is that it has gone down by 1.4 percentage points from the previous quarter. And this was largely driven by the fact that we have seen employment increasing by 294,000 from the previous quarter to 16.9 million and unemployment has decreased from 8.4 million to 8 million. Of course, while we have seen the discouraged work seekers increasing by 160,000. All right, well, Kalani, these are important numbers. There are lots of different ways to look at it. We'll go through the sectors in a moment. First, uh, what's happening in the provinces? What does that tell us about economic activity? So the northwest in the second quarter uh, was the worst in the country. Um, amongst the worst in the country, Eastern Cape was uh, a second um, in terms of the highest unemployment rate. That seems to have turned in the third quarter, looking at job losses that actually took place. So Gauteng lost 66,000 jobs, the highest number of jobs uh, lost in that particular quarter. And that should tell you something about uh, Gauteng being amongst the smallest provinces, but uh, having the highest population uh, being a city that 
that employs a, a lot of people. Migration is taking place. A lot of people are coming to Gauteng for jobs, as well as the Western Cape. But if you look at uh, the jobs lost, the biggest number of jobs lost were in the Western Cape in the second quarter, followed by the Mpumalanga province, KZN, Northern Cape, and the Northwest. Um, the Gauteng province wasn't even in the picture in the second quarter. We I absolutely don't know what turned the picture uh, to such an extent that now Gauteng is number one in terms of jobs lost. Um, it, what is important, however, is that there, was, uh, there were jobs created in seven provinces. The rest of the provinces actually created jobs, and it should be celebrated that the province let, that lost the highest number of jobs at 65,000 in the second quarter, which is the northwest, uh, actually gained the highest number of jobs this uh, time around. Let's take a listen to what uh, Risenga Malulega had to say about the provincial picture overall. Unemployment has decreased in seven provinces between the second and the third quarter of 2024. The largest, uh, the largest decrease we can see was in the Northwest. And indeed, if we look from the right hand side, we can see that uh, the Northwest is dropping in terms of unemployment and that is why when we compare it with the Eastern Cape, it used to be the lead in terms of the official unemployment rate. But now the Eastern Cape has overtaken the Northwest. And of course, we can see provinces like Limpopo and KwaZulu-Natal where unemployment has actually eased a little bit higher than it was. And we're talking about the official one. Limpopo and KwaZulu-Natal, uh, KwaZulu-Natal and Limpopo being the third and the fourth from the left-hand side. There are many different numbers to go through here, Kolani, and one of the big issues, of course, is the fact that we have a skills crisis in South Africa as well, which is why the number of unemployed graduates is always so important. What information about that this morning? This is uh, important because it means that uh, we have a problem in uh, employing the people who have the skills, who have the papers, who have uh, gone uh, through the ringer to actually be trained. Graduate unemployment is up 0.1% in the third quarter. And compared to the second quarter, graduate unemployment was down 2.1 percentage points to 9.7% in the second quarter. Now it's at 9 9.8%. It goes without saying, Stephen, that um, the level of um, education that you attain, uh, particularly in a country with so many divides as, uh, as unequal as South Africa, uh, determines where you will go in life most of the time, particularly when it comes to whether you find a job or not. Those who have less than metric are actually um, mostly unemployed, 39.3%. They are the ones who do not have jobs the most. Those who have metric still at 35.8%. Those who actually attain the tertiary, some level of tertiary education are at 23% unemployed. Graduates uh, being at 9.7%. So uh, that is uh, actually the picture. And it's something that actually tells you that uh, what we are not doing right in the country is actually having policies that give people the right set of skills. And if we are not going to uh, give people um, training or education beyond uh, metric, we're still going to have this problem of less uh, skills. If you look also at that very important number of people not in employment, education or training, that number has gone up as well. So the, the, the discouraged seekers, uh, job seekers, um, uh, has gone up as well. So uh, uh, people who did not have jobs have stopped looking for jobs and are not even upskilling themselves or in educational training in order to be employable. This is what uh, Risenga had to say earlier on about that conundrum uh, when it comes to our education crisis spilling over into the unemployment crisis. Graduate unemployment has always been the lowest. And of course, it has increased by one uh, percentage, uh, one uh, percentage point, 0 0.1 of a percentage point, my apologies, from 9.7%. 
Now it's sitting at 9.8%. It is followed by other tertiary sitting at 20.8%. Uh, metric and less than metric are sitting at 34.1% and 37.8% respectively. I know we want to know about young people. Young people aged 15 to 24 years, as well as those 25 to 34 years, have the highest unemployment rates sitting at 60.2% as well as 40.4%, as we can see the red colors right at the bottom. And of course, their labor force participation rate, as well as their uh, absorption rate, relative, are relatively lower than what we see in ages, particularly 35 to 44. Now, young people aged 15 to 34 years, their unemployment rate remains the highest than the older groups. So while our unemployment rate is sitting at about 32%, uh, we can see that when we go and look at those that are older, their unemployment rate is sitting at 22.2%, and that of those aged 15 to 34 years is sitting at 45.5%. Uh, of course, there are different sectors and different things happening in different sectors. And one of the crucial sectors is construction. We all know about the infrastructure problems that we've had. This president, the one before him, and I suspect the one before him, have all said that they'll turn the country into a construction site. Are we seeing any evidence of that? Um, a little bit this time around. It because in the second quarter, the quarter before the one we are speaking about today, construction actually um, was one of the leading uh, um, uh, sectors in terms of jobs that were lost in the second quarter. That has turned around now because more people are employed in that particular sector. The, let, let's look at the sectors that actually lost jobs in the second quarter. Finance, construction, uh, trade, um, agriculture, private households letting go of uh, the gardener, letting go of the house help. Um, all of those are actual, were actually in the second quarter. That has turned around now. Construction is uh, has added jobs uh, in the third quarter. Trade has also added uh, jobs. Community services, the expanded public works program, social workers and the likes, that has added more jobs. Uh, and uh, the, the sectors that actually uh, shared jobs, where jobs were lost, um, uh, it's unfortunate that the finance sector, which is a huge sector in South Africa, um, lost jobs in the second quarter and has lost jobs in the third quarter. And that, that, I can't say right now what that tells us about those two quarters or um, the finance sector, but the people who are selling directly to you insurance, uh, the people who are selling directly to you uh, accounts, people who are working in that finance sector, they are the ones who have lost jobs in two consecutive quarters. And also private households have lost more jobs. That means households, we know they're under financial pressure. They just can't keep people um, employed. So if you're employing a, a house help for four days, you're telling them come in for two days a week now. And also manufacturing. Manufacturing uh, did lose uh, jobs in, uh, did gain jobs in uh, the second quarter. They've lost uh, jobs in uh, this particular quarter, the third quarter between July and September. So they there is a lot of toing and froing, and earlier you were talking about um, of a uh, seasonality that mm -hmm. uh, I forget to mention that uh, in in uh, um, in provinces such as uh, the Northwest, which is an agricultural, mining, and tourism province, you will find more jobs being created in the third quarter because of agriculture. And um, the the quarter, the fourth quarter, we are uh, doing, we are going into now. We are expecting that more jobs will be created as we are going to have Black Friday and the festive season. So the seasonality is going to come in and we should expect that in the fourth quarter there will be more mm. jobs added as well. So uh, there's been a lot of talk in sort of government and policy and economic and business circles about the, what they call the change in sentiment. In other words, business likes the coalition and also likes the fact that some parties are in it and some parties are not. I'll leave it to your imagination to work out what business likes and what business doesn't. But sentiment, how people feel, can be very important in an economy.
But that's not the end of the story. You really need to see action. And I don't know if we've really seen much action that's changed regarding government policy, regarding jobs, regarding the economy, regarding anything. Of course, the big shift really has been load shedding. But we don't see that in the official growth figures in the economy. We do see it in the employment figures, and I'm sure there are a group of statisticians who are about to have the biggest, most boring argument about <laughs> why that is. But we also do need to see action for this to continue. We can't just coast along on optimism forever. No, uh, that's, that's absolutely true. When we spoke to different political parties uh, in the midterm budget policy statement, those who are with uh, inside the GNU, there are different views uh, when it comes to this issue of unemployment in terms of how to tackle it. Um, some parties, and I won't mention who, um, for fear of any reprisal, um, uh, believe that uh, there are too many rights, too many worker rights that should be taken away. And that is the argument that I'm sure you've heard uh, before, Stephen, that uh, it, it's too hard to hire and fire people. It should be made easier to hire and fire people, just like uh, first world countries such as the United States. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's not going to go down well with the unions in the country. It will never uh, fly with the unions in this country in terms of uh, making that uh, particular uh, uh, policy easy uh, to hire and fire. What we, uh, what we absolutely know is that uh, without economic growth, we are not going to see uh, um, South Africa removed in terms of being at the top of the country with the highest unemployment rate in the world, followed by the likes of uh, 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 Spain at 11 percent um, and other countries on the African continent. That's where the crux is. Whether uh, the employment policies are good or bad or they favor the employer or the employee, that to me really does not matter. What matters is what are they doing in terms of removing Moving the structural bottlenecks, making sure that uh, um, uh, investors locally and abroad can plow money here and grow the economy. That's the only way, and we all agree on that. You can't put a dent on unemployment without doing anything about economic growth, real economic growth. And um, what we've seen in the past couple of years, we haven't had real economic growth at all. Of course, so much needs to happen and so much has to happen. Uh, some of it is around Eskom and load shedding. Some of it, you can't really grow an economy without water. I mean, that's going to be the next big problem, especially in Joburg. Absolutely. Uh, if we thought that uh, load shedding was bad, water is going to be as bad for investment, for job creation. Many sectors are actually um, uh, dependent on water for their everyday production. Uh, just uh, before we go, I know that uh, you haven't asked me about this, but uh, what is also interesting is also the youth. Um, the youth uh, remains the most vulnerable in terms of unemployment. Um, black women most, uh, remain the most vulnerable in terms of unemployment. If you look at the numbers, a 60% expanded unemployment rate, 60% are unemployed in a country in a world where uh, many first world countries are crying out for younger people their populations are becoming older and when you look at those between the ages of uh, 15 and 24, the unemployment rate is at 45.5%. That is massive. So uh, the, the questions will be to the policymakers in uh, uh, Parliament, government as the administrators and of the private sector. Let's not forget them. What are they doing in, in, in actual fact to make sure that uh, at least there is some, um, there, there is some uh, uh, training, there is some uh, uh, skilling of the youth that we have because we may never always have these numbers that we enjoy in terms of the number of young people we have in the country.